Today in Alaska, crude oil production was all but stopped on, an, on the North Slope. Oil companies operating there were told to cut their production by more than 80 percent after thousands of barrels of crude oil spilled from the Trans-Alaska oil pipeline. The 800-mile Trans-Alaska oil pipeline, at least for right now, is shut down. That spill in Alaska is happening, of course, in the shadow of a much larger spill in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, actually, you know what, if it's okay with you guys in the control room, I, I think we should just probably just have me stop doing this now and let the gravitas white guy anchor do this part. Let's do that. In Alaska, the pipeline has been repaired. Oil is expected to flow again today. But that crack that developed Sunday allowed 1,500 barrels of crude oil to escape. 700 barrels recovered. And in the Gulf of Mexico, oil workers are trying to handle a much larger oil spill. A burning offshore oil well is dumping 30,000 barrels of crude each day into the Gulf. So, yeah, that was from 1979, June 13th, 1979. That NBC News anchor reporting on a pipeline spill in Alaska on the same day that an oil well was leaking out of control and burning in the Gulf of Mexico. 31 years ago, in June 1979, an oil well called the Ixtoc blew out in the Gulf of Mexico. It started spewing thousands of barrels of crude oil into the Gulf every day. And it's not just the disaster itself that should sound familiar to you. It's also the techniques that they were using at the time to try to contain the spill. Airplanes are to be used to drop chemicals on the oil, but there is a shortage of aviation fuel down there. The workers are also putting up a mile-long boom. They're putting it into place. They're trying to contain the oil slick in the Gulf of Mexico. Chemical dispersants being spread across the Gulf by plane. Mile-long booms being set up to contain the oil slick on the surface. If you close your eyes and you just listen to these news reports from 1979, you would be forgiven from thinking, for thinking that you had flipped on the news today. The Ixtoc rig erupted in the middle of the night in 1979 in June as it was drilling for oil in the Gulf of Mexico. The drilling was being done by a company called Sedco. Sedco later became known as TransOcean. The operator of the rig that blew up this year in the Gulf of Mexico. The reason the Ixtoc explosion turned into a massive uncontrolled leak 30 years ago is because the well's blowout preventer malfunctioned. Sound familiar? The blowout preventer failed to stop the Ixtoc leak, and what followed was an environmental disaster the likes of which the country had never seen before. Floating barriers are still being stretched across the waterway near South Padre Island to keep approaching oil from spoiling this popular sport fishing area, which is also vital to shrimp fishing and endangered wildlife. Oil skimming vessels are also being put into service to catch any patches of oil which may get through. About five miles offshore, another team of private oil containment workers is prepared to intercept drifting oil before it gets to land. The Coast Guard has already said it will be impossible to get it all, and they're particularly concerned about oil moving underwater. Plumes of oil moving underwater, oil containment teams, skimming vessels. Again, these are not badly colorized reports from the BP oil disaster in the Gulf right now. This is reporting from Deja Vu Land, from essentially the same disaster in the Gulf of Mexico, but in 1979. The only thing missing back then was worries that the loop current would carry the oil out of the Gulf of Mexico all the way to the coast of Florida. Oh, wait. There is now a distinct possibility that oil spilling from that runaway Mexican well could spread as far as the Gulf Coast of Florida. That from an official of the EPA. The Extoc disaster in 1979 in the Gulf of Mexico went on for weeks. Then weeks turned into months. The reason it went on for so long is because even though oil companies were allowed to drill offshore like that, it turns out they didn't know how to stop a leak when disaster struck. Nothing they tried worked. In the Gulf of Mexico, rain and heavy seas are hampering efforts to cap a Mexican oil well it has been spilling since June 3rd, the worst spill in history. Workers are trying to put a giant cone over the well. Despite inclement weather, they may try again today. Trying to put a giant cone over the well. In 2010, this giant cone strategy is what we were sort of euphemistically calling the top hat. I wonder if they had a euphemistic name for it back in 1979. Mexican officials are calling it Operation Sombrero. Workers have been trying since the weekend to put a 300-ton steel cone over the mouth of the runaway well. Officials say once in place, the cone will collect up to 90% of the crude oil, which has been gushing from the well for more than three and a half months. 
from 10,000 to 30,000 barrels a day have flowed into the Bay of Campeche and the Gulf of Mexico. As with BP's top hat, the Ixtoc spills Operation Sombrero ultimately failed to stop the leak. But they had other ideas back then that were sure to solve the problem. Ideas like shooting metal spheres into the well to cut the flow of oil. You might call that today a junk shot. They also tried pumping cement and salt water into the leaking well to try to jam it up. You might call that a top kill maneuver. Neither of those things worked. For months and months and months and months and months, the Ixtoc well continued to leak uncontrollably until... Two relief wells are still being drilled to relieve pressure on the blown out well, so it eventually can be capped. Relief wells. Nine agonizingly long months after the Ixtoc well exploded, a pair of relief wells finally allowed the engineers to cap the leaking well. That was 31 years ago. I am 37 years old, and this happened when I was six. Those haircuts are back in fashion. And the stuff that did not work back then is the same stuff that hasn't worked now. Same busted blowout preventer, same ineffective boom, same underwater plumes, same toxic dispersant, same failed containment domes, same junk shot, same top kill. It's all the same technology. The Ixtoc well, which couldn't be plugged for nine months, was in roughly 200 feet of water. Now in 2010, we're using the same exact techniques to try to plug a well that is leaking in 5,000 feet of water. Now look, maybe this top kill maneuver will work. We obviously hope and pray that it does. Praying does seem wiser than hoping at this point. That said, as we reported earlier this hour, BP executive Doug Suttle says tonight that it looks like it's drilling mud and not oil. That is what's now coming out of the ruptured well, but they can't tell for sure. The thing that's essentially been guaranteed to work in the past is a relief well, and that's still months away from being complete. The oil companies keep talking about how technologically advanced they are, but what they've gotten technologically advanced at is drilling deeper. They haven't gotten any more advanced on how to deal with the risks attached to that. They haven't made any technological advances in the last 30 years when it comes to stopping a leak like this when it happens. All they've gotten better at is making the risks worse by putting these leaks further out of our reach. Oh, hey, congratulations. Now the thing you can't stop is a full mile underwater. That's all they've gotten better at. That and making themselves the most profitable industry the universe has ever seen. And I am not exaggerating. Officials say the oil could reach all the way to Florida as it continues to threaten the U.S. coast for months. William Monroe, NBC News, South Padre Island, Texas.